Um, you know, I've been pushed around and grabbed before, but I never did anything. This was the first time I snapped and fought back. So um, it got to the point where it was in front of the canteen and I got put against the, the wall. And exchanges happened, and I don't know any boxing, so I pretty much got bashed a bit first. And then I responded with a roundhouse kick to the head. And um, after that, um, after that, the fight stopped. Uh, my my the person that I was fighting, um, you know, after the roundhouse kick to the head stopped. And it was just a big shock. It was a shock to everyone around me, but more importantly, it was a shock to me. It was a shock to me that I finally overcame that choking feeling. G'day, this is George Free, and welcome to another Martial Arts Media Business Podcast. So I have a guest with me today, Terence Fernandez, and uh, I was at the main event in Sydney just a couple of weeks back, and we sparked this conversation uh, about the topic of bullying, and um, something I really want to speak to Terence about, something he's really passionate about, and something he went through as a child, but then there's also things I don't want to neglect as a Martial Arts Media Business Podcast that he's got six locations, just opened his first location internationally and opening another three next year. So there's a lot of value to share on the on the business side, but um, we're probably going to start more and talk about the bullying aspect, a topic that's always hot with within the martial arts community. Um, and uh, yeah, well, as always, we're going to see where this conversation goes. So welcome to the show, Terence. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, awesome. So, um, as always, I just uh, let's just start with the beginning. A bit of a background about you. Who is Terence? Um, yeah, so um, I'm from Sydney, Australia, and uh, um, uh, the sport that I do is taekwondo, um, and uh, my club is called Martial Arts Spirit. But um, basically, I was like your average martial arts student um, that was just trying to find a place to belong. And, um, and you know, I tried that through group sports, uh, soccer and basketball and things like that uh, before I got enrolled into Taekwondo. And um, I didn't quite find it in group sports. I think with group sports, there's a, there's a, there's a bit of pressure involved um, in expected to perform to, to achieve uh, the goal of the team, uh, whether it's winning a match or, um, or, or whatnot, winning a season. Um, and because I already lacked in confidence and I wasn't really good at, um, at any skills or coordination, um, being put into that team environment, I felt like I was letting the team down. And through that, um, I, I experienced some, some bullying in, in, in the team as well. So remember I was playing uh, for a soccer team and I didn't know anything about soccer you know, I don't know the rules. My family doesn't know anything about soccer. So I thought it was just running around the field to kick a ball. And, you know, I, I think I was probably about seven or eight. And I still remember uh, the Saturday game where I was constantly offside and um, and not knowing the rules. Um, the, the team were getting really angry with me and the parents, the parents from the sidelines, I were getting really frustrated with me because I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. And um, I started getting called names. I was the only, like, Asian type of background person in the team. And I got to the point where I come to training and just really um, outcasted and isolated. And uh, I used to get spat on by my own team. So, you know, as a, as a kid, um, it's quite a lot to deal with, um, especially when the first reason of uh, trying to do a sport is to actually find a place to belong. So um, after that, uh, just got scarred from team sports, um, and that's when my parents enrolled me into martial arts. So, um, how yeah. old, and how old were you when this was happening, Terence? Uh, about about six years old, and I got enrolled into martial arts when I was about seven. Yeah, so I think um, uh, something very very important that everyone needs to be aware with is with bullying. It doesn't really matter how small or how big the scale is, the end effect, um, you know, um, psychologically can impact long term. So, um, you know, there's quite a lot of things that I remember as a kid in primary school and in high school um, that I think about constantly, you know, and even though I'm a completely different person, um, 
there's still memories and, and I still remember the feeling of what it felt like to be in those little scenarios. And, um, you know, that, that's why that's why we're here today uh, because there's so many people, so many kids, so many um, people in the workforce. Uh, bullying is just a massive thing that isn't slowing down. And um, I think it's really important that we get the message out there um, as to how to deal with these with these situations. For sure, it's it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Because um, you know when you think about it, a team sport is there to build that team camaraderie and unity and everything. But then, obviously, there's going to be a point where not everybody's going to be a, that unit. So where it's it's where it's super beneficial for people that are in the crowd and trying to do that. But I mean, what do you do when that's not your personality, perhaps, or yeah. That's not your skill set. So you try and, you know, you might have kids, and especially in a, in a school environment, you've got kids that are maybe super passionate about the sport and trying it. And here you are, and you're trying to chip your way into this group. And, you know, you've got this thing that I, I want to be as cool as them, but then you just get shut out. And I, and I think that's the beautiful thing about martial arts as a sport, uh, not being biased at all, but um, with, with, with team sports, um, you automatically get put into that competition side of the sport where you're preparing for a competition. The outcome of the competition is to have fun. Yes, it is to have fun, but the end result of that competition is to win the game. The point of, say, for example, soccer is to score more goals than the other team. That's the that's the goal, and um, and uh, that's what you're that's what you're uh, trying to achieve as a team, right? With martial arts, the beautiful thing about martial arts is there's so many different avenues. Um, you know, for, for example, Taekwondo, you can come in as a white belt and your why, why I related so well to martial arts was it's an individual sport, so I can focus on uh, at my own pace, um, building up the skills needed to achieve the next level. I can go at my own pace and I'm not expected to be going as fast as everyone else, right? You still get the support of a team, which is your club, um, you know that you, you build up the social skills you, you you have support from your other uh, from your other belts that are a beginner level you do it together and the support of your instructor and we all, and as we all know uh, a martial arts instructor is completely different to like a, a volunteer coach in a sports team you know the martial arts instructor goes well beyond their their service of just teaching a kid how to punch or kick they they're a role model they they help them build up that that confidence to get through life you know and that, and, that, and, that, and that's our role um as instructors not just to teach martial arts but to to help shape them into into a good leader in society you know so um so with martial arts you know we're talking though you've got that option to to just do the traditional side where you can go at your own pace and focus on building yourself up and then if you are that competitive person like you have in basketball or soccer where they they want to take that next um step you know, all martial arts offer that. They, they have their traditional side and they have their sports side where you go into uh, competitions, whether it's patterns or sparring or, or um, XMA, you've got that whole side and, and there's something for everyone. So for some kids that like to do sparring, they've got that sparring side. For kids that love to just concentrate and, and, and have that perfection type of uh, mindset, they've got their forms. And then for the kids that love to be fancy and really test their body to the limits, you've got that XMA side. So um, that's a beautiful thing about martial arts. It covers everything. It covers that personal growth that they that they might just want to focus on, or if they really want to challenge themselves, they can go as far as the Olympic Games. So um, for me, uh, how that related to me was um, I, I I didn't like the pressure from team sports, um, and I just loved the traditional side of martial arts. But then as I gained more confidence and I started to realize more about myself, learn more about myself and think like I actually have skills, I have um, something in me, some drive, um, I started pursuing the, the sport taekwondo side and trying to, you know, uh, represent my country and got Commonwealth, um, you know, Commonwealth gold and just started to learn more about myself. And through that, through that journey of discovering myself, and realizing the drive and, and, and motivation I actually have in me, 
that mindset, that um, that that strong mindset that um, martial arts taught me, then transmit into business. So you know, and and that's a beautiful thing. The the, the skills that martial arts teaches you, the perseverance, the concentration, all of that is transferable into everyday life. So you know, I'm not being biased to martial arts, but um, <laughs> compared to other sports like. Martial arts is just awesome, especially for those kids who are really trying to find themselves and 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 you know they they might lack in confidence because they don't um they don't feel like they're up to everyone else's standard. Martial arts is just beautiful for that. So let's go back to um, so you were six seven years old, um, being bullied. I, I guess we should ask why do you, why do you think people are bullies? That's a very good question and um, something that. Um, I think the the answer needs to be educated more to parents. So for me, um, so like we've been teaching martial arts a lot now, and um, we've also got a program that is implemented in a lot of preschools around uh, New South Wales and South mm-hmm. Australia. Um, it's it's a preschool program where we teach the kids martial arts in preschool. Um, the reason why we started that was because I found that bullying starts as early as preschool. So um, we see it every day in preschools. Um, and the, the more preschools we started teaching and then, you know, talking to my kids that are in primary school and high school and in the workforce, you kind of see similar traits across all ages um, as to the bully, why they bully, and the, um, the, the target, why they're targeted. So... Before we go on to the target, okay, let's talk about the bully, okay? The bully, why does why do they bully? Um, they bully because they feel that they need to have um, that superiority over someone that makes them feel safe, makes them feel that they um, that they can't be touched, okay? So the bully. The reason why they bully is because of a lot of insecurities um, that they may have, um, which could have been caused through their own, you know, life journey. You find a lot of people that used to get bullied, they then become a bully if they're not guided in the right way, okay? So, for example, if a kid is abused at home, right, and they've got all of this anger and frustration, they need an outlet. And they feel that that outlet is to put others down so that they can feel better about themselves, you know. So, um, so yeah, so with yeah, they, they have a lot of insecurities and um, and the need, like they 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 wanting to they wanting to um, feel like they belong. So how they do that is they try to humiliate someone else to show everyone else um, that they're you know that they're tough that they're powerful. Um, but really deep down inside, they're actually just trying to um, trying to belong and trying to make themselves feel equal or, or better than everyone else. Um, and unfortunately, for them to feel that, they need to find a target. Now, when they look for a target, they look for someone who they know isn't going to challenge them, that they know that they can um, psychologically um, defeat um, to avoid uh anything physical so they they know that they can defeat them psychologically and know that they're not going to even challenge them physically um and it's someone that they know that they can um isolate so someone that they know doesn't have a strong support network around them so friends for example uh, who aren't going to stand up for that person either and when they find that target um, that's when they pounce. So you ask, why do people get bullied? They get bullied because um, they get found as a target. Uh, they lack in confidence. Um, they don't know how to voice their opinion. They don't have a support network around them. So, you know, a, a good, like, solid friendship base or, or, or a network of people. Um, and, and yeah, and, and, it's, and slowly, as... as as they're targeted for be, uh, um, to get bullied, these 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 low attributes that they have then start spiraling into other things. So like 
you know, they, 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 their confidence drops even more. They, they, if they didn't know how to express something before, when they get bullied, they, they dive into a shell and, and they start um, holding everything inside even more. So they don't speak about their problems to their parents or to their friends or to their school counsellor or anything like that because they already had that weak attribute to begin with, you know, of not being able to express themselves. And when someone's bullying them, it, it, it really kills me inside because usually the targets that are getting bullied, they're such beautiful people who who don't want to bother people, who don't want to um, don't want to put any 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 burden on other people, and because of this um, beautiful heart that they have, uh, they they take it upon them to hold it to themselves and to just bury it inside, and slowly slowly the more that they do this, it kills them, it kills them slowly slowly, and then. Sometimes, unfortunately, it gets too much for them and, and, and they break. And, you know, um, I know I'm being very straightforward with, with delivering this message, but, you know, when it comes to bullying, we, we, we can't really just put it under the rug and think that it's going to go away like, like a lot of school teachers or, or bosses in the workforce do. They think, oh, yeah, it'll be all right, you know. They'll tell the kid, oh, you know, um, stop doing this, say sorry, shake hands, and then they forget about it. But it doesn't happen like that. The more that the situation goes on, the target, the more that, that, that these problems keep hitting them in the face, two things will happen. One, they will either snap and really deal with their problem front on and say enough is enough. Or two, they'll just keep burying it inside and it will, and it will destroy them as a person. And we've seen countless times how many people take their life because of bullying. And this is just because they've reached the end of their rope and they haven't been able to express themselves and it's just built up, built up, built up. And because they don't have the knowledge of what to do or they don't have the support network around them, they give up. And this is something that we don't want, you know, for anyone. So um, that's why we're here today to try and educate people more about bullying. Yeah. So I've got a, I've got, I've got a few questions, you know, from just from that. Um I first, firstly, I just want to mention because I, I'm, I mean, I've recently gone through. I guess I'm a lot more attentive to it now because um, my my son is 12 years old at this point in time. Uh, recently got into the same type of situation, a bullying situation at school, um, and he's been doing martial arts for seven years. He's a he's a smaller kid, um, really, as you say, just a beautiful heart, nice kid, and. Um, Although he can, he can put me down when he wants to, like even, you know, in a play situation, he can take me down. Um, but in a bullying situation, he was, he was almost crippled. He, he didn't yeah. want to defend himself. Um, yeah. he got caught in a headlock and he was, he was almost more fearful of the consequences of getting yeah. suspended in school, which, which put me in a bit of a term, uh, a, a bit of a situation. And I, I've got a, uh, we've got a, business group for martial arts school owners um, on Facebook and I post the question, you know, um, does martial arts really help against bullying? Um, obviously just, you know, the question was more spurred with frustration, but um, it did spark a really, really good conversation and just martial arts school owners chipping in and, and really talking about their experiences with it, um, frustration with the system of how, it, you know, how it goes about combating bullying because um, it's almost like the bullying is the bully is more protected than the victim, mm -hmm. and and that's something I said to the teacher as well. Is is like, hang on, there's a bit of a double standard here. Is uh, my son is fearful of the fact that you know if he had to defend himself, he'll get suspended, but you've got a bully that's allowed to bully, and I'm getting these vague messages of there's consequences, and I'm like, but what are those consequences? Is, is it a is it a slap on the wrist? Because if I had to do this in workspace and if I had to go do this in public, that's a criminal offence, and and I'll get charged for that. So how come that's not? You know, where's the consequences in school? Where do you actually combat that at such a high level? Yeah, well, um, I can relate to that story really well. Um, so what, what? So in primary school. Right, um, uh, because of my lack of confidence and um, not knowing who I am, uh, I had no friends. I was a kid in school 
this is until about year eight okay so picture picture primary school walk around the playground trying to kill time because you know buzzer goes for lunch okay i, I know my my routine just walk around the school to kill time um and and think about being a victim you always care about what people think of you so you know when i walk i'd be cautious about how i walk or do i look funny when i walk and and so on so i was really outcasted right in um, high school i tried to make that change of um of you know i need to make it a point to hang out with the popular kids and um you know i made it a point to hang out with the popular kids and then uh, when it came to lunchtime, they would be walking around the school picking on targets to bully. So then when that happened, I was like, no way. This is not me. I can't be this. So I hanged out. I felt sorry for the kids that they were bullying, and I told them to back off, leave them alone. And I started hanging out with those kids, which later, I'll tell you a bit later, they were my first students. Um, but, yeah, so I hanged out with those kids, and it made me the biggest target. So, um so yeah, so in high school, um, I was walking around and and um, and my my usual high school lunch uh, then became walking around the school again, like it was in primary school, and um, I became the biggest target. When I say biggest target, the bullies stopped focusing on everyone else and they just focused on me. And um, you know, it was things from come to my locker, my locker's been uh, broken into, all my books are in the bin. Um, you know, thumbtacks on my chair, um, you know, just walk around the school feeling so much anxiety and, and having to know that, oh, next period I have English, okay, I have this bully, this bully, this bully in the class, okay, I have to, I have to as soon as I get to the class, I've got to find out where they're sitting and, 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 and think about where I'm going to sit to avoid that situation. Um, and it gets to the point, you know, where, you, you have to really gather up so much energy just to even get yourself to school. So um, the point I'm trying to make is I, 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 I dealt with all of this, all of this buildup inside for so, for so long. And um, the, even though everyone knew I was a black belt in Taekwondo, because I didn't have that confidence, it, it, it gave them more reason to, to, challenge, uh, to, to put it on me because they knew I, I wasn't going to challenge them. And the reason why I didn't challenge is lacking confidence. Even though I can do sparring and I can kick the head and all this type of stuff, you have that choking feeling when when, when you're confronted outside of your dojo uh, premises. Because in the dojo, you understand the rules of the game. You understand that it's a safe environment, that you know nothing's going to go wrong. But then when you take out yourself and you put yourself in a public um, environment and you've got everyone looking and and challenging you you're, you're, you're trying to battle with your own insecurities and, and the pressure again you know that pressure that I was talking about before you're then faced with that again in, in, in a school environment and thinking of what everyone thinks of you and then you've got you've just got these bullies in your face that you're constantly having to deal with psychologically every day you know it's all those different factors that when it gets hit in your face, you choke. You don't remember what you're taught in the dojo. You don't remember the skills. All you remember are your insecurities. All you remember is, you know, how much you just don't want to be there, how, how you just want to run and how you just want to avoid. And that's what it comes back to. And that's what causes the the, the, the victim to just choke and, and, and bury themselves. And... Um, and I remember one specific scenario which led to the next turning point in my life, complete turning point in my life, which relates to your question. Um, I went on a, mu a music excursion going to the city, and um, these bullies were at the back of the bus, and when I came into the bus, there were no seats. It was at the back. So I had to sit there and, um, you know, minding my own business, and then someone had a whole bunch of lollies, and they just started throwing lollies at each other around the bus. Right, and um, and then suddenly, I was the the target. So you had like about six of those those guys at the back, and they were just all throwing one by one um, lollies at me. And you know me being the kid I am, I I just try to pretend that the problem is going to go away, and that you know just hope that it's going to uh, go away, which which the victims will think. Um, it didn't. So the boy behind me um, had chewing gum. And he put chewing gum in my hair without me realizing. I knew he was doing something, but I just didn't want to. I didn't want to aggravate the situation. 
So I just left it, but I didn't know it was actual chewing gum that it was putting in my hair. And then when I found out and I and I touched my hair, I I broke down, you know, and as a as a as a boy in high school, you know, um breaking down, just completely breaking down, tears and everything, it's a it's a destroying it destroys you, okay, because you, you're trying to hold on to some dignity and, and at that point you just know that it's just killed you, like you, you've just lost. So um, I tried to get it out of my hair when I went back home, but I couldn't, so I had to go to the hairdresser and I had to shave my head. So after that, um, like my, my brothers were a lot younger, so I had no one to really talk to at that point and um, I didn't talk to my parents, I didn't know anything that was happening. And it just got too much for me. At that point, it was breaking point for me. Um, I wanted to end life, um, and I just had no more energy to to, to, to build up to go to school. I, I, I was already facing this thing of having to go to school and face them. Now I have to go to school again, and everyone laugh at me because I've got my head shaved, and um, they know what happened to me, and I just didn't want to face that. So... Um, um, before I actually executed what I planned, um, my parents knew that I was acting weird and um, they came in my room and um, out of frustration, I told them what I wanted to do and um, from there, they knew that, that something was wrong. So they took me to counsellors uh, and with counselling, I didn't quite, um, I didn't quite get anything out of it because as I started to speak up, um, as I got comfortable and spoke up and broke down, um, I think it was the first time I realized that my uh, problems wasn't just at school. Um, it was at home as well. I had a very um, um, negative relationship with my with my dad and um, all of that pressure that he was putting on me and 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 uh, and um, psychological damage that I was getting at home as well was adding a lot. To, to, to my stress and to my anxiety. So um, obviously when, when I started to open up about that, um, my dad stopped sending me to the counselor. So then I, uh, that avenue got cut for me and then it got, it, it, I had to deal with it again. So about two weeks later, I went, I went back to school. I had the courage to go back to school. And um, like usual at lunchtime, if, the, if they found me, they would go at me. And, um, and I snapped. It got to the point where I reached the end of my rope. I had no more options, and I snapped. So um, we had a, I had a physical fight for the first time in my life. Um, you know, I've been pushed around and grabbed before, but I never did anything. This was the first time I snapped and fought back. So um, it got to the point where it was in front of the canteen, and I got put against the, the wall. And exchanges happened, and I don't know any boxing, so pretty much got bashed a bit first, and then I responded with a roundhouse kick to the head. And um, after that, um, after that, the fight stopped. Uh, my my the person that I was fighting, um, you know, after the roundhouse kick to the head, stopped. And it was just a big shock. It was a shock to everyone around me, but more importantly, it was a shock to me. It was a shock to me that I finally overcame that choking feeling. You know, I finally overcame um, that feeling of being suppressed. You know, just just the pressure and all the problems just being suppressed and I finally just let go and and my training for you know I, I was already representing Australia at that time all that training just it suddenly turned into that environment uh, where I felt relaxed and I felt responsive and I knew um, the, the surroundings around me you know all that training that you that you do that suddenly came into play after that roundhouse I was like hang on a second this is just like sparring this is just like the gym. This is just like that game. And um, after I kicked him and, 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 and the fight stopped, um, funny enough, I got suspended. I got suspended from school and um, that family um, tried to charge me with assault. So um, the good thing was uh, that I already had a track record with the school. Um, I always reported when I was getting bullied. My parents always stepped in, which didn't help the matter. Um, it, it made things worse at, uh, sometimes. Um, but the school had a record. The school had a record of all the times I was being victimized. And then um, when it came to this where I actually did defend myself, um, because of that record, the, the police, congr uh, they didn't congratulate me, but they, they were proud of me, you know. So and, and, and everyone was. I was surprised to come home 
and my parents are actually proud of me that I kick someone in the face. Like, and I couldn't, I couldn't understand that. I'm like, I was so scared to come home and tell them that I got suspended, I got in trouble, um, but they actually high fived me um, because, not because I kicked someone in the head, but because I, I was able to face my fears, you know, and and overcome that that obstacle. And from that day, uh, from that day onwards, my life changed completely, completely. The next day I went to school and I went from 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 being no one, from walking around the school trying to avoid people, to people coming up to me and, and you know, um, saying, oh, I heard about the fight whatever, and whatnot. And uh, it was just a sign of relief for me that um, that it was all over. From that point on, it was all over. That group, you know, they, they didn't come after me again because they knew that I would challenge now that I would stand my ground and that I had confidence in myself now and I realized the abilities I have and that if I'm pushed into a corner, I will bark, I will bite. So it stopped from there. You know, if, if one of them started, another one would tease the, 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 the bully. They would say, oh, don't, he'll kick you in the head. So from there, it just it just changed. It was a domino effect that changed my whole life, that, that one day. So. And how old were you then? Where? So at that time, how old were you then when, when that incident uh, happened? I was in year eight. It was term two in year eight. So um, I don't know, probably about 13, 14 maybe, 13. Yeah, so a little bit yeah. younger than, than your son. Yeah. So, but, um, so, so seven years. So that's, that's a, that's that a fascinating a story. Time. It takes a long time. It takes a long time. It's not, it's not so, like the matter can be changed like that. The, the bullying situation can be changed like that, but the journey to get there takes a long time. It's about finding yourself. It's about it's about being comfortable with who you are, you know, believing in yourself and um, and learn like in in in, in the situation of self defense, learning the skills on how to on how to defend yourself. And martial arts does help against bullying in all those ways. Helps build up your your confidence. Helps build up your um, you as a person, your character, and and um, how to deliver your message. They give you all the skills. They give you the skills on how to defend yourself, and they give they give you all that character development. But just like a coach would tell their student, they can tell you what to do, but unless they do it for themselves, you don't get the result that you want. And 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 that journey of of learning how to believe in yourself and how to um, how to defend yourself in that scenario. Um, that's an individual process, and and depending on the individual, it can take years, like it did with me, seven years, yeah, yeah. or it could take a month. You know, so it's just about the the, the, the individual and, and how fast that that process is of, of discovering who they are. Yeah, it, it's such, it's it's so interesting for me because I'm I'm always about the mind and how the mind works and things that you said earlier of. Um, you know how things have affected you from being a kid to later because you you, you know and, and sometimes as you evolve as a person you start you start questioning things that you're doing it's like hang on but I get angry at this or I get frustrated at this and uh, and then when you when you peel the layers back it's it's belief systems that you've set up either as a as just out of a habit or out of fear of a situation and and that sort of shapes the way you you go through life, um, and you know you, you're talking about the the time it took. Um, I think my you know uh, something I heard this week on a training talking about um, motivation runs out, but if you ha- if you have the habit and the discipline, the discipline will keep you going, no matter sure. where the no matter where the motivation is, because you you're going to find training sucks and you're going to find this sucks, but if you got the discipline to push through, then that's what's going to keep you going. And I think that's so important because like you said, and and like I've seen with my son as well, he's got all the world's training and he, he can use it, but it's just, he hasn't, he hasn't, he has, you know, it's, it's crossing that, that line of, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be that person. I've got my insecurities. I've got all that to that point of, I snap and that's it. I'm not putting up with it anymore. I'm, I'm crossing that line. And I, that was really what my question was about in, in the martial arts group is does martial arts really help in bullying? Because 
it gives you all the tools and everything, but then that real life situation is something you, you cannot really prepare for. Because I mean, I mean, you can have five or ten of your instructors pin you down in a corner. There's still there's still an element of trust in your mind. Whereas um, I know my first bullying situation and growing up in South Africa is probably completely different because I was with a friend on a jetty fishing, and and I had a <laughs> I had an older kid look at me and said, "You and and this is the type of people they were," and he said. I'm going to cut your throat and I'm waiting and he stood waiting, you know, and, and I remember that element of fear, like this is someone that would, he would do it just because he didn't like me or whatever, you know, whatever the case was. But um, I, I just remember that element of fear that there's, there's this realness of a situation where you, you can't prepare for that because even in the dojo, you can prepare physically, but that mental pressure of, I'm really in danger. Like, this is life or death. How do you prepare for that? Oh, so like, but it's it's interesting that you say that. Like, you you, you use that example of that of that guy. But could you actually could you actually try to understand the upbringing person of 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 that of that kid? I mean, for him to have that type of persona. Um, you know, can you imagine what that what that person has actually gone through to get to that stage? Um, so, you know, I think with us before before you learn how to deal with that situation right there, if you take a step back and as a parent, okay, or or as an instructor or or a friend, you can kind of see a lot of flags before that even happens. You know, how how old were you when that happened? <clears throat> I think I was about eight years old, eight or nine years old. And how old yeah. was he? He was, he was, he was probably early teens. And the, the funny, the funny thing is, I had uh, a, a kid that used to hang out at the jetty. It was probably the the scummiest, roughest kid ever. And uh, he looked at me and he said, "Don't worry, I've got you." And uh, and he walked with me off the jetty. We walked past that guy. He got on his bike and he cycled home with me. Um, it was a it was a big lesson in life, you know. Where this, I looked at this one kid that I thought was just the the scruffiest, most scummiest kid, and uh, and he walked with me and cycled home with me. It was it was it, it was just you know. Now that I think back of it, it was a multifaceted experience in that way. Isn't it crazy how you still remember it and how it still damages you psychologically? You still remember that fear. You still remember that isolation. You still remember that that choking feeling. You know. And that's what I was talking about before. But to go back to your question, like if you if you look at that teenager, it explains what I was saying before about needing to feel superior, needing to um, dominate over someone to make them feel better. And you being as young as you were eight, and him, you know, just just near teenager, he knew that you're an easy target. And um, and unfortunately, something like that. It's 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 a very difficult thing to 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 deal with. Um, lucky for you, you weren't alone. So I think uh, you not being alone definitely helped. Um, because and, and your friend, that 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 scruffy friend you're talking about, that's what we want to build in society. People like that, people like that, that will help build that that support network. Do you know what I mean? Having that strong link next to you. Um, whether it's yourself that is the strong link or your friend, you know, and that's what we want to build in, 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 in our martial arts students to, to be that leader, to be that leader in society, to create that change. And, um, you know, thankfully you had one of those leaders next to you, um, that pulled you out of that scenario. But, um, that, 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 that actual bully, uh, the actual bully, um, himself, there's a lot of things that could have been done before that, that could have helped. Um, change that person and that's one other attribute that martial arts gives you which could um, help prevent someone from being a bully so when someone has these 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 life um, experiences that can either change them to doing um, negative outlets like you know pulling out their aggression uh, on someone or, or stealing or doing things out to cry that they need help um, 
if martial arts is their thing, it would provide a positive outlet. So a positive outlet that they can channel all of their negative energy, which was for me, and all of these feelings from home and from school, all of this negativity, which I, uh, my outlet was training, just continuous training. And, and it was my serenity. It was my place where I could come and just belong, find myself, be peace with myself and just focus on myself and just train, you know? So I think, um, there's many things that you can do on a base on a base level that can avoid these situations altogether. The bully finding a place where they can have a support network like a martial arts studio and have a good outlet um, to 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 take out their negativity on. And for your friend, for example, or even yourself, you know, building up those characteristics on how to be a good lead, how to um, how to stop that stop that scenario from happening. You know, so building that that link system you know to 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 be the strong link or to have a strong link with you um and and that's a beautiful thing about martial arts it helps both sides so um but in terms of the actual scenario when it's too late and you're there obviously not being isolated not being by yourself and um finding a safe environment finding other people to 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 that, that will see awesome Terence, I've got one more question for you. Um, I actually had two, but then we might we might go on a on a whole uh, on a whole new tangent. Um, I might just stick to the one for now, uh, and it'll be a good way to to actually wrap up wrap up our chat here. If with 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 everything you went through with bullying and and uh, what happened at school, knowing what you've experienced through martial arts and what you've learned, discipline and everything. What would you say to your six-year-old self in that situation, in that bullying situation, if you had to go back in time? That's a good question. Um, I think that not just my six-year-old self, but anyone who is dealing with bullying at the moment, no matter what age they are, whether they're um, an adult, um, teenager, or, or in primary school, they need to remember that life is a journey life is just a journey where you continuously learning about yourself and in life you will always be tested there will be many tests that come your way whether it's financial whether it's being bullied whether it's you know relationship crisis or anything like that there are many many challenges in life okay and each challenge is an experience an experience that you can learn from to better yourself and to make yourself a stronger person. And as life goes on, as you get through each obstacle or each day, you learn from it. And by the end, um, like uh, they'll come to a, a certain point in your life where through those experiences, you become confident and comfortable with who you are. Whether it's being alone, whether you, you know, find it hard to make friends. You get you, you you gain confidence and and um, you become comfortable with being in that scenario. So if you look at all the successful, like not all, but most of the successful people in this world, they've all gone through many many experiences, and often you'll find that they uh, had to defeat it alone. But through that hardship, they're now able to face any obstacle and being independent, being comfortable with who they are and what they can do and knowing that they can do, overcome anything, any obstacle in their path, they can overcome it now and they don't need help. They're, they're so strong. Their character is so strong. So I think um, anyone who's in this situation needs to understand that it's a learning experience that will shape, um, that will shape you um, and it's always important to be mindful of the direction that you're going, whether you're going towards a negative way realizing that that's a negative path um, and a negative way about um, dealing with your situation and trying to find the positive out of it, the positive way to, to learn from it, to deal with it, and um, the, how to turn that experience, uh, how to turn that negativity into a positive experience that's going to help you in your future um, being, a be being a better version of yourself. So for me, that, that whole bullying experience, you know, it's shaped who I am today. It's um, it's given me everything that I have today. You know, my business, the skills I have and talking with people. I couldn't pick up a phone before and talk to someone. 
have that much anxiety. Now you can put me in front of 2,000 people and I'll just talk because nothing is going to be as bad as, as what the past has been. I've overcome everything and it doesn't matter what I get uh, put forward with today, the, the, the mindset applies. The, the, the same principles apply with, you know, this is a learning experience. What can I learn from this? How is this going to make me a, a better person for the future? That's it. Excellent. Terence, it's been great speaking to you. Um, it, it, it almost, uh, and, and just before we wrap up, it makes me think, you know, um, everybody fears public speaking. Like I say, people fear public speaking more than death. And I'm, my thinking is, well, maybe you haven't been in a situation where you've got to fear death. <laughs> yeah. Because what you're really saying is perspective, right? Um, because of perspective, and that's, and, and then that could almost be the good thing about it. You know, yes, you, you had a bad experience, and unfortunately it was, it was horrific, and, it's, and it sucked. But uh, when people are able to navigate through that, uh, you, you build up this resilience and, and uh, I guess, confidence in life that you can, yeah, just take on bigger things and better things for the, for the future. But you just said it there, like you're talking about that mindset of resilience and, and how to use that um, to, to tackle the future. In, in, in its plainest form, resilience, um, in the martial arts dojo, isn't that what martial arts teaches you just on a basic level? You know, not to give up when you're feeling sore, not to give up when you're losing on points or anything like that to keep pushing through. Uh, if you can't get a pattern to, to keep trying and to keep at it, you know, martial arts instills the platform and then you build off that platform as to how to apply those principles in your everyday life. So that's how martial arts um, and and the journey in life really um, uh, benefit each other. So back to that question you're asking, does martial arts really help with, with bullying? Yes, it does, but um, it's up to the individual on, on when they choose to, to apply it in, in their everyday life. That's why we love it. Yeah, that's right. Awesome, Terence. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, great topic, and I'd definitely have you on again for round two, uh, you know, if we get maybe expand on this topic or uh, talking about the, the business side of things. So if anybody wants to um, get in touch with you, learn more about you, where can they do that? Yeah, so um, I'm actually going to start a YouTube platform um, pretty shortly. Um, everything to do with martial arts and um, topics like this, bullying, uh, as I am very, very passionate about the fight against bullying. Um, so you can uh, search us up on YouTube. Uh, I believe George is going to put a link, uh, easy for you to, to follow. Um, yep. Otherwise, you can just follow us on Instagram, uh, which is coach underscore Terrence. So coach underscore Terrence, T-E-R-R-E-N-C-E. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about martial arts, business, and the fight against bullying. So if you have any questions, just hit us up and I'm happy to share whatever knowledge I have. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Terence. Speak to you soon. Thank you. See you later.